Good Sunday morning and happy Easter to all of you. This morning, I was listening to Majesty Radio. If you haven't ever listened to that, you can get that, I think, anywhere. But it comes out of Chicago. And they were playing that song, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? Ah, that got me all teared up. But, but Easter isn't about him dying. And I'm so glad he did. And I'm just so thankful for the Father for allowing Jesus, his son, to come down here. I mean, you can imagine. They've never been apart. And to have to let him do this, but it was a plan before the foundation of the world. It's just hard for us to understand because his ways are higher than our ways. But that he knew in advance what was going to happen with Adam and Eve. And he knew we would need a savior. And even though he knew all this would happen and knew that he was going to have to die for us, he still created us. We're that special to him that he would lay down his life for us. He would leave heaven, come down here and be tempted like we're tempted and suffer like we suffer. And he paid for all our sins. When he arose from that grave, it showed that he overcame death so that when we are born again, we accept him as our savior, that we overcome too. So that when we die, we're, gonna, we're out of here and we're gonna live in a wonderful place in heaven forever. But actually heaven comes down here on earth. This earth is going to be totally renewed. I'm just wondering if he's going to make it bigger, the earth or what. Who knows what the earth was really like before sin was here. It's a beautiful earth now, but oh, it's uh, going to be the way it originally was before sin entered in. And there'll be no more death, no more crying, no more depression. No more misunderstandings, no more hurt feelings, no more sickness, no more loneliness, nothing like that. It's going to be so wonderful. And we're going to be reunite, reunited with everyone. I'll be reuni reunited with my mother, my father, my grandparents, my br two brothers brothers and then there was one who passed away five months old before I was born. I've never seen him. So many of my friends and my son of course and my great granddaughter. Just, just and you know the older I get the more people I know who are up there. So it's gonna be a wonderful time. Wonderful time. But don't just sit and live for that all the time because we're here for a reason. Just like Jesus, when he came, he came to die for our sins and he nailed every sin you ever committed on that cross. It's nailed there. It's been paid for. You are free. It's not anything you have to do. But if you're truly born again, you don't want, it's not that you will never sin again, but you won't. You want to recompense it. You want to, Ask God for forgiveness when you do sin or if you're not living right and you keep trying, we keep striving. We'll never make it without him. Just the blood of Jesus is the only way we're going to get in. I mean, <laughs> if we're up there, it is not because of anything we've done. We will get rewards for the good things we've done. But it's only if I get there and they would ask me, why would I let you in? It's, I just plead, I'm pleading the blood of Jesus that washes me whiter than snow. <laughs> oh my goodness. And when Jesus looks at us, when you're born again and covered with his blood, when he looks at us, he doesn't see sin. He doesn't see anything you did, you've done wrong in the past or the present or the future. He, does, he doesn't see it. He covered that sin. You're, you're, sins in the future 
your sins of the past, your present sins, they're covered. Not just covered, they're washed away. They're washed totally away. You're, like I said, whiter than snow. Ah, that's so wonderful, so freeing that we don't have to keep working and working and trying to make it. All right. Well, I didn't come to preach. I really didn't come to preach. But this actually is Tuesday. And Mr. Bill's at Bible study, men's Bible study. And um, I don't know that I'm going to be able to make a video Sunday. So I'm doing it now. And I grabbed this dress out of the closet. <laughs> this is an old dress, if any of you are going to ask about it. But um, I remember the first time... Mr. Bill saw me in a dress. I could not believe the reaction he had. So I think I even did a video about, yeah, I did a little video on that. I think I was wearing this dress. And uh, he just, he still remembers it. And I still remember his reaction. It means a lot to a man when he put a dress on. They like color too. So I'm not taking this. Well, I'm not going to wear this, I don't think, Sunday. I don't know. We'll see. All right. To, now, hang on to the end of this video because Mr. Bill is writing a book. And the title we came up with is, And They Survived. And this is about Mr. Bill's relatives coming from Germany, coming here. I think it was in the 1700s. So he needed a picture for the, a picture or painting for the cover of the book. Um, I haven't been painting for a very long time. Um, but I, I knew it would just mean so much to him if I did it. Plus, you don't have to pay for a cover picture or photo. So I did a painting and I will show it at the end. I did it quickly. I probably should have took time, but I did it quickly because I, all my painting supplies are just hard to find now. I had a studio when I was in Crown Point, Indiana, and now I don't, it's not that I couldn't have it, but I'm just not into painting that much anymore. <laughs> but, uh, so I did it quickly and I kept thinking, oh, I should have really taken my time with it. And then when I do something too quickly, then I think that I didn't do a good job. He loved it. And I, th and I think the more I like it, I think it will be good. All right. So I'll show that at the end. All right. So, you know, we have a bluebird nesting box in our backyard. Actually, the Bluebird Society, Mr. Bill joined that. And they came out and put the bluebird box in for us. And they knew exactly where to put it. And we live in a golf course that's open, and I think they like that. I used to think that the bluebird nesting boxes needed to be way away from the house. But uh, this is, you know, right from our kitchen window, we can watch them. Uh, and they love it there. And so last year we raised two boxes, or boxes, <laughs> well, they were in the nesting box, two nestful baby bluebirds and uh they all survived so we're happy about that so now we've been putting out those little grub worms you buy in a bag kind of nasty looking little things i ordered ones from amazon some were still alive yuck but these were dead he got them from the nursery here close by and uh yeah the bluebirds love those so we just had so many lovely birds we've had and uh, so he put his camera there's a little slot on the top of the bluebird box and you can put your camera in there and take a picture and there were two eggs now she's probably laid more since then because there were four eggs last year in one nest and then five in the other and no we didn't touch the bluebirds and they're they're very forgiving of you and um looking in there opening the net the box once the bluebirds eyes are open the babies then you can't do that no more because they could fly out or just jump out they'd be startled so but um 
the Bluebird Society wanted us, wants us to check periodically on the babies and the nest and see how things are going uh, and make sure that it's not a sparrow or some other bird taking over the nest. We, they are bluebird eggs, so I'll show a picture of that too. See what else. Uh, oh, what have I bought? I bought, you know when you're traveling, like Mr. Bill has his phone connected into the car because he likes using that as we're traveling for the GPS. But then if my phone runs down, then I'm trying to plug it in there off and on. So, I gotta see what the name of this one is. This is a, a charger, oh, A-N-K-E-R, and I will put a link for it. It's thin, and you can see the outlets here. So you can plug in your um, tablet or you can plug in your phone in here. I don't know yet how many hours you get out of this, but that's such a nice thing to have. And you remember when I told you I quit getting the powdered nail dip? And uh, so now I've cut my nails all down really short. <laughs> and they're like, totally messed up from having those that nail dip so but i i think i told you i ordered it but i didn't show it to you but i've been using it like crazy and this is it's a glass file it's real smooth oh, not that side this side's real smooth and this is the file side all those little snags that you get it takes them off and this is the weirdest thing if you go across your nail like this, lightly, you probably can't see it, but it makes it real shiny. It it looks like um, not that far, maybe you can see, but it looks like you have clear nail polish on. And I want to go without nail polish for a while, but I hated that dull look. I love it. I couldn't believe it. Mr. Bill was surprised I did it on his nails. Well, he let me do it on two nails. <laughs> you know, men are. Another thing, I've been trying to lose a little weight. Uh, I just, all right, okay. All right, I can tell you what I weigh. One, th I weigh 139.5. I'd like to at least get to 130, but. It's, you know, it's just barely holding its own. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I just got to keep working at it. But some of the plate, I want to put a smaller plate for when, you know, if you have a big plate, you feel like you got to fill it up and you eat. I saw these at the dollar store. This cute. This one says, gather together. It was only $1.29 and it's microwavable. So many of the plates, I had some plates this size, but they're not microwavable. And I do not like to put my food on a cold plate. I put my plates in the microwave for one minute, always before I eat. And plus it keeps your food warmer. Don't like cold food, I'm really funny about that. We all have our quirks, right? And then, so I got three of them when I, I was in a hurry because he was checking out and I just seen these. And I seen one of them I got with a different one, but that's okay. This one says, bless his home. So that was cute too. Only $1.29. But like I said, it's the little things that kind of make you happy. Uh, I've been using my uh, waiver. The, uh, really, it's a vibration plate. Got back on that. Um, I really feel like, especially as we get older and we're sitting down a lot doing things, you need that circulation. Because I've heard that you should not sit for over an hour, but every hour you should get up and move around. And sometimes I'm working like on a YouTube, you know, project here and or writing stuff and I, 
I'm sitting there longer than I think. So I get I'll get up and I get on the vibration plate and you can just feel it with your circulation. And Mr. Bill, uh, who's been kind of struggling with diabetes and you get that uh, neuropathy in your feet and that helps him too. So I'll also put a link for that. I'll put a link for my file and for that charger. I might as well write I'm telling you what I'm doing, okay. Um, yes, Mr. Bill did the taxes. I don't actually every year do taxes, but for as long as I've been married, I'm the one who had to get all the stuff together and keep all the receipts. And um, it wasn't a real big deal, except for my former husband, who one who passed a deceased husband, Larry and I, we used to rehab houses. So you didn't know that about me. And boy, there was a lot of receipts and stuff. And I hate paperwork. I just detest paperwork. And Mr. Bill is good at keeping records and stuff. He keeps receipts for everything. So all I have to do now is just give the receipts to Mr. Bill. And he takes care of all of it, takes care of the taxes. It's all done. Praise God. There's some perks to being married. There really is. But, you know, I told him, him and I, we or we go over things. So if anything would happen to him, I know exactly what to do. Oh, uh, we don't like to think about that, do we? But God has taken care of me so far. And he will continue to take care of me. He has never failed me. So if you ever get fearful about that, or something happening to your husband or anything in the future that you fear, just all you have to do is look back and remember, he's taken care of me so far and he is not going to stop. He's very close to the brokenhearted and, and to widows he promises to step in and be the husband. Okay, let's see, what else? Oh, I made, we went to small groups uh, last Wednesday and um, I made deviled eggs. And uh, it doesn't seem right, does it, to make deviled eggs for a small, for a Bible study group. <laughs> but the leader of, uh, Chuck, the leader of our Bible study said, Deviled egg just this meant spicy eggs. Something like that. So, okay. And they were a big hit. Uh, in fact, I, next time I have to double that. And they were so good, I came home and made some more the next day. And I made a big pot of vegetable soup the other day. I do that every once in a while because sometimes I have uh, vegetables in the, in the bin that kind of need to be used up. And uh, that way, I kind of use all that up and get fresh vegetables. Not that they're rotten or anything, but you know what I'm saying. Just, oh, I've got a little car I got carrots, I got onions, I got a little green pepper. And you just start putting all this stuff together. And it was delicious, you know. You know, when I was married to Bill, no, not Bill, but Larry, my second husband the one who passed it, we were married for 40 years. He was not a very good, he was a skill, dri skill driver, but he was scary to ride with. And he would get angry also on the road. All right, I don't wanna say any, any more than that, all right? The reason I'm telling you is for a reason. We lived in Indiana and we decided to go visit my cousin, Dolores. Dolores was older than me. She was a teenager, I was a baby and, and she remembers taking care of me some. And she said she feels guilty because she treated me like a, a doll because she would just sit and keep changing my clothes. You know, like how you would with a doll. Or she put me in the buggy and took me for a long, long ways to see a boyfriend of hers. And then she felt real guilty about that. And I go, I don't remember it. I go, what did I do? 
I go, was I sleeping? And she says, well, yeah, I think you were sleeping. And I'm like, well, don't worry about it. <laughs> so I just, she just wanted to talk about family and reminisce. And I took her, I think it was a CD with all these vintage photos that she didn't have. But we drove there and it was the worst trip. Bless his heart, Larry was not fun to drive anywhere with. By the time we got there, we had, this was at the time when the Tom Toms came out. I think it was called Tom Tom. It was a GPS sort of thing. And we weren't real familiar with it, and we didn't travel a lot, but we had that. I'm watching the time here. Okay, getting kind of long. But... It was dark when we finally arrived in Tennessee. She lived in Tennessee. I'd never been there before. And it was dark and she was like up in these mountains and it was wooded. And he was getting mad and driving faster. And and then all of a sudden he and it said, turn right. GPS and he turns right and boom there's a big tree in front of us and he slams the brakes on and I'm calling my cousin Dolores and she's outside on the porch with a flashlight <laughs> she doesn't know where we're at and we don't know where we're at so I'm thinking it was like maybe one in the morning or something like that by the time we got there I was my eyes were burning because I felt like I hadn't Calls them, you know, just watching the roads and everything and being so upset. I was totally exhausted when I got there. And Larry went to bed and her and I sat up till the wee hours looking at these pictures and reminiscing and talking. And she loved to talk. Uh, so... You know, that was a few years, several years ago. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking, one day after Mr. Bill and I were married, Larry had passed away and Mr. Bill and I, and I was, you know, I thought, I still, do I have her address? What, what part of Tennessee? Because I'm living in Tennessee now. What part of Tennessee was that? I am really geographically challenged. I don't know where I am at the time. <laughs> so I looked it up in my uh, contacts on my phone and I didn't see the address. And then I contacted one of her daughters, which I didn't really know them well. I've only met the one, well, I've seen them when they were little, you know, real small. And I got the address. It was Crossville. Crossville, Tennessee, where I'm living right now. I couldn't believe it. Then when I looked at the address, she was only, I think it's six, yeah, six miles from my house. And so Mr. Bill and I were someplace the other day and I said, can we go past Dolores' house? And he says, sure. And so he stopped it and we put the address in. And because he's, she had a, um, it is a modular home. Cause he said, there's no modular homes here in Tennessee. And so he was really surprised because it was in Preston. I think it was called Prestonwood, the subdivision. And uh, we went in there and it, the nicest modular homes and we found her house. And I go, yeah, that is the house. And, and we drove past it, went around, drove past it again. I was so wishing she was alive. I, I forgot, yeah, Dolores passed away. She was in a nursing home, her and her husband, Wally. And uh, yes, as I did send her letters and I called her when she was there in the nursing home. But, but anyways, she, we did get to go by there. And then I found out the church we're going to, her daughter goes there. And 
her name's Linda, and and Linda also, I think she teaches or has some kind of class. It might be where people have been divorced or something like that, or grief class, something. But anyway, so her and I, we are we will get together someday here. So I thought that was interesting. I just I couldn't believe it that here I was and here I end up in this same town, only six miles away. Who would have dreamed it? You never know, folks, where God's gonna take you. Here I am with my second husband and end up here, living here. And Mr. Bill's a good driver. I like that. Okay, talk about Mr. Bill. He bought a new computer and it's a L L E N O V O Lenovo. Lenovo. Uh, laptop. I think it's a 17 inch screen and he loves it. And uh, he goes, it's so fast. <laughs> the one he had was about 12 years old. It was so slow. And this is helping him so much working on his book. So it's getting long, folks, 26 minutes, so I'm going to have to go. But um, so I'll put the picture of the painting I did for his cover of his book. And God bless all of you. And God bless all your families, your children, your grandchildren. May you have every need met by our Lord Jesus. And if you haven't asked Jesus into your heart, oh, do it. It's the most wonderful thing, especially when he becomes the pilot of your life and you just yield your life to him. I have never been sorry for a minute. It's been wonderful. He's just, he never leaves you never leaves you. So, and again, happy Easter to all of you. And God bless you. I love you. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed, do that and like or comment. All of those things helps the algorithm on YouTube and, and uh, helps me out. Helps me reach more people. Okay, God bless you. I love all of you. Bye-bye.